what sorrow I feel for these characters. Yes, they have freed the dragons, but at a great price. They've lost, oh, their nation's gold. Dude, the scene's over. It's been over since yesterday. Stop it! Last Action Heroes uh, is, okay, mostly about the writers uh, dealing with the hunters uh, sell selling uh, dragons for, for bidding to very bad people, but ultimately I just remember it as the fact that this is the episode that introduces Grump to Gobber. Yeah. yeah. Though, oh god. It's not loud, in it's not loud going into this Daniel Day-Lewis phase. <laughs> And if you guys don't know who Daniel Day Lewis is, well, he's a, he, he's an he's an actor who uses the the Stanislavski method. This is about it's about using actual your actual memories to create a living, breathing character. And uh, he, he is the Dustin, Dustin Hoffman uses it. Uh, oh boy, uh, Marlon Brando uses it. And it's it's all about it's a method acting. It, it's it's called method acting. It's all about believing that the character you're portraying is real. You really are this person. Yeah. So he believes he's who? Olgen Thorpe or Thor something? Olgenstein? Olgen Thor? Olgen well, Idol. whoever this guy is, at least it's better than Snotty Thor. <laughs> Snotigan. Mm-hmm. And. He goes way out of his way to portray I, himself as different. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I think he's. I don't know. I think he's just happy the fact that he can cosplay for a little bit. That he's <laughs> that he's just he's just going all out. Yeah, that's kind of this feeling I got. Mm -hmm. Though, what was your thoughts when he bitch smacked Gobber? I was like, I was like, oh, I cannot wait for the punchline. Yeah. Uh, uh, anyway, now, the, now, what thing though? Oh, we're those are synopsis, right? Uh, well, yeah, we there's the pre we got the gist of it. We got the gist of it. Now, okay. the beginning of it, we we meet an old old friend. Mm -hmm. Trader Trader Johan, who hasn't shown up at all until now, and then not once did he go on a long winded story. Yes, and honestly, like. When I first saw him, I was actually hoping that, you know, he was going to take a risk to steal that map. I was actually hoping he was going to do it on his own volition. Yes. I was hoping he, was gonna, he wasn't, you <laughs> know, being bribed by Hiccup. That, or, no, be, act, or being forced. Or being forced. I was actually hoping he grew a pair of balls and, you know, like, I'm going to do what's right. No. Nope. Nope. God damn it. There's some, some <sighs> things will never change and there's no hope for some people. I I can only hope and pray and wish, a lot of other things. All right, so they so the writers know the location of where this uh, auction is going to be held. Hiccup persuades Stoic to take all of Burke's gold. Mm. In, in in order to you know get someone on the inside, and they had to. They had to find someone that was never captured by the hunters that they couldn't possibly know, and uh, unfortunately, the only person available was Snotlout. Hold on, he wasn't captured. I don't think so. But then again, not remember Dag. You know, Dagger has actually seen Snotlout a couple times, and he can't even remember his name. Yeah, well, he wasn't the sharpest arrow in the quiver. Uh, that was Snotlout. Yeah, I'm saying that. Yeah. So, he's probably that forgettable to him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, and so they kind of, they kind of make him so ostentatious. I mean, they just deck him, I mean, he's pretty much covered in gold. They even, his hair is blonde. He's, he's got, got a gold helmet. He's got bling. 
You know, he's, he pimp slaps, you know, his servants for a living. You know, while acting tough, like... Yeah. <laughs> Don't you dare speak back to your master like that! And he has that haughty accent. Haughty. <laughs> I got, I'm kind of one. I'm pretty sure the voice actor kind of didn't was having fun in the in the sound booth. It probably was. <laughs> and no, no, there was a suspenseful moment. Oh, yeah, there, a very, do. A very good one. Now, okay, now Trader Johan docks at the you know, pier, and. He, he wants Riker to you know, accept these dragons he's presenting as a token of goodwill for a safe passage through his you know, trade routes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you know, of course, Vigo is walking on steps on a, on on a, a, loose, on a, loose, on a loose floorboard, which indicates hollowness. And, you no, know, Vigo being Vigo, you no. Know, Suspects something, and you now first he drops a coin through the floorboards. I don't know why. If it would have hit something, what would it hit? Ah, okay. If it would have hit a person, there wasn't a ting. Mm, okay. All right. So, and, then, and then, okay, then we get the the little fake out where he cut, where he goes, the the uh, uh, the smuggler has. Has a feels uh, you know a moment of relief and then bam yeah he bam. smashes w through the floor with his foot and looks in and only find nothing but darkness or is it yes Tiflis has covered a whole entire gang with his wing I kind of do have to have a nitpick on that because he that Tiflis removes his wing when when Vigo is still slightly on top what if he did like a double take. Yeah. Yeah, so they got no, lucky no, on that. No, no, also the fact that, yes, it would be dark, but true darkness does not mean, like, pitch black. If you're looking at Tufus's wing, it's pitch black. You're going to see what's on the bottom of that floor, unless that is one hell of a big ship. Mm hmm So, he should be seeing that floorboard. No, that doesn't raise him some questions, like, huh, I can't see the floorboards. Mm -hmm. I wonder why. And, uh, I don't know. Maybe he... Maybe he, you know, since he is supposed to be of a higher intellect, maybe he already knew. Touche. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, Vigo was kind of not very intimidating or threatening in this season. In this, he was kind of in top form. Because when, when the writers are eventually captured, and, and including Toot and all their dragons, including Tootless, uh, are, ca are also captured. He says to Hiccup that I'm going to sell your dragon. He will fetch a hefty price, and I'm gonna make you watch while I do it. And like we're gonna play, but I'll get over it soon. Well, like it's nonchalant. Mm -hmm. And of course, no, no, no. Now here's one important thing. Uh, their escape plan hinge. Hinge. This is one thing that. I think Roger Ebert points out that, I don't know what trope it is, but if one thing hasn't happened, the rest, the, the plot is foregone. Mm -hmm. If Gobber hadn't befriended Grump, yeah. if he had not, you know, <laughs> showered it with love, mm -hmm. it, or, did he even it was a rock? I don't I know. Think but, it was, I think it was a fish, maybe? Fish. But if he had not, you no know, hugged, loved, and you no know, Grump, they would have never escaped. Hiccup would have saw his dragon being sold. Yeah. I kinda, End story. I kind of have to, I did have to bring up, because I kind of, I did thought that was a little too rushed. Like, it was, I mean, yeah, it's, the, that uh, Grump does look like a very huge, lovable, a lovable puppy. <laughs> a, lo a lovable, probably bulldog. Yeah. A bulldog. Or a pug. A big pug. Mm, no, not a pug. Not a pug. Okay. It looks, like a, it looks like a bull. It looks like a bull. It looks kind of like a bulldog. It's a bulldog of a dragon, and and so it, so maybe it would be trusting very quickly. But it was hang, it was hanging out with hunters. That either either way that this yeah, like you said, the whole the whole reason they got out was because uh, because Gobber did befriend Grump. 
Yeah, and that was like one scene. That was not even a scene. No, that was like a, there wasn't it was much. Like, of it was a, just a moment. Yeah, it was just a moment. So that whole thing hinged on that, and that's like if that would have been pulled off at the at, at string here, like <laughs> that whole thing would have crumbled. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, th that's that's my biggest nitpick of the day. Okay, but it, this was still good, and we seem to have been introduced. I don't know. I think we've been introduced to another villain, maybe like for the next season. That's what I'm wondering. You know, he's cloaked. He you don't see his go. eyes. He yeah. has a beard. It is a very well shaped beard. He, you know, and uh, I'm gonna point this out. Probably of Arabic descent because he looks like Jafar. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry if I'm profiling. It's just how it sound. That's just how it sounds to me. I just like it. it. He, I just like it. He, you know, he wants the knife here. He hands it the bag. All of a sudden, whole hell breaks loose. Yeah, give me that bag. And he just walks away. Yep. Doesn't no. even say a word. That's just actually that's, pretty I, funny. Yeah, I, I am very curious about that figure. Please bring him back. Mm-hmm. Please. <laughs> but yeah. But anyway. So yeah, Vigo is Vigo escapes. We get a in a fight. We get a fight between Riker and Gobber. So no. he's, now he he's broken out of his comic relief. Yes, and uh, actually Gobber's pretty bad as when he wants to be. Yes. No, I love it. You're like freaking Gobber looks like how old is he? Like I, I don't know. I, I, he's, maybe uh, he's in his forties. Forties, early fifties, maybe. Uh, but he's taking he's doing really well for a guy who looks like he's in his thirty early. 30s, maybe late 20s. But, for, and, you know, he, he throws Riker through all sorts of crap. <laughs> yeah. He throws him into the cage. He runs up a wall and does he, another he drop. He drops, yes. And, and by the end of it, he lost a hook. Mm -hmm. and by the way, that is one badass guy who can fight a sword with just a hook. Yes. Fuck, Captain Hook has nothing on this guy. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Freaking... No, Peter Pan can defeat Captain Hook with a freaking dagger. Gobber can defeat a guy with a sword with his hook. Mm hmm. And all right. So, although I did, I will have to nitpick on the animation because I think it dropped a little bit, especially in frame rate wise. I think then, then might, you were nitpicking on that fire thing. I was nitpicking. It didn't, it looked like a, a stock fire asset. I've seen those. I've seen those. Not to mention that was one weak little fireball. Mm. Like, bleh. I, yeah, it kind of was. But anyway, Hiccup uh, go, mm, flies towards Vigo. Vigo has the chest of all of Burke's golds and drop it into the ocean. And they dive after it. And it looks like Hiccup, may, you know, he does grab it, but it's dragging him down with him. And it looks like he's about to lose it. And, you know, Astrid, Astrid res, rescues him. Only to find out that there's nothing but rocks in the chest. Okay, that just leaves questions about how do you know this was going to happen? How do you prepare a chest with rocks in it? Like, when did he have the time? He's a genius, he's man. Just, he's a genius, but you cannot genius your way of foreshadowing. If he knew this, was, did he know this would happen? I get maybe Mason he, Towns he, is more comp is more complex than chess because I guess he. There are some people who really can see. Who are really smart enough to see different scenarios play out. Okay, he's gonna see that Hiccup's gonna bring off Burke's gold. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he was counting on it. I mean, th I mean, isn't. I mean, that's almost like, oh, I'm gonna sell these dragons. Do you think we should prepare for those dragon riders that we. T that constantly thwart our plans and has been ruining our business? No. I'm not saying he's not gonna prepare for that, but just for that one particular moment where. When did he have time for this? He just like, okay, I want you two to get a chest out, put rocks in it, just in case. I think that might have been the actual Burt chest. I think they just probably, they might have just put all the gold into a bag, because it is coins. Yeah, but... Or a different chest. Still, that's a lot of coins. And I don't think we saw him out of sight with that chest for a long. Hmm. Uh, oh well. All right. Well, it's happened. There's nothing we can do to change it. Yeah, but we got a new dragon. We got yeah. No. We got a new dragon. No. New ish. New ish. But no. Okay. I'm gonna have to travel backwards because remember that one dragon that we took home to the edge. 
We haven't seen him. Oh yeah, the Pokemon. The Pokemon. Yeah. Where is he? Yeah, what happened to it? Was there a reason for that? I guess uh, so. I, no. I have to wonder about some choices on this season. Mm-hmm. Oh well. What's done is done. Yep. I got nothing left. I got nothing left. Hell, they could have used that Pokemon. They probably could have. No, get that could have could have seen what exactly does a, does a sting from a triple strike do. Yeah. Fuck. Heck, I might even bring that Pokemon. I don't know. I want to see what that triple strike could do. Mm-hmm. Hell, you could have taken one of those sting speciesers with you at home too. Yeah, seriously. Well, maybe the, maybe they will. I mean, they did. We didn't see them. We didn't uh, see them return to the edge or have them talk about, let's get these dragons back to the edge, so maybe they have. Hmm. Anyway, I think we're thinking way too hard on this episode now. Yeah, but, but that's besides the point. I am finished, I am done, I have nothing left to add. Okay. Oh. We will see you for the last episode of this season.